I am pleased to be joined with Greg Jenkins and Aritza Menjivar, uh, who are here from the Somerville Arts Council to talk about Porch Fest and how Porch Fest is now Couch Fest, but it's still Porch Fest, <laughs> and uh, kind of the changes that need to, uh, to have uh, occurred in order to still hold the event uh, in light of the, the uh, COVID emergency. And uh, welcome, Greg, to you. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Dave? I'm doing okay. And welcome, Aritza, to you. How are you? Hello. I'm doing well. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is nice uh, to meet you as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Greg, why don't we start with you about um, Porch Fest? Um, it, it was kind of the first major Arts Council event um, that was coming up on the calendar. It's a big spring event. Uh, everybody kind of looks forward to it. And uh, how, how have you retooled it? How, how have you reshaped it to, to be something else? Right. Well, I mean, it was scheduled. Typically, it's scheduled for the first uh, or the second weekend in May. Um, and actually, sort of the big event that's canceled is Open Studios, which is usually the first weekend in May, which is sort of sad. But I they're, they too, that organization starting to do some, you know, virtual work. But uh, I think between those two events was always kind of the way in which to shepherd in the, uh, you know, shepherd in spring for Somerville. Um, I mean, most people know or may know that, you know, Porch Fest started and it was, you know, very much, um, you know, a community based thing in the sense of like, like our first meeting, we sort of threw out like, would anybody be interested in this? And, you know, we had like 30, 40 people show up to a meeting at the library. Um, and from that, it's very much, it's very much a sort of, uh, you know, decentralized, it's always been decentralized um, kind of community based event where the arts council is just trying to provide a structure for the, you know, for the music community. So, um, so it kind of grew from like, I think maybe like 70, 80 type of bands, like bands and porches. Um, last year, I think we had like close to 240 people, you know, groups participating on porches. Um, and it's always been very much a neighborhood type of thing. Um, so we divide up the day um, in three different zones. So sort of, you know, uh, the western part of the city from Willow West is one zone, and then from Willow to Central is another zone, and then from, you know, Central to, to the eastern part of the city is another zone. Um, and so, you know, the community kind of just flows through the city, picking up on various bands, and um, a lot of what it's about is the neighborhoods, and a very much about sort of a decentralized approach. So we don't curate it, like we don't say you know, this rock band is terrible or this, you know, classical musician group is inappropriate or so there's not a level of curation. I mean, the curation is more about trying to create structure where people can participate and then trying to provide guidelines as it relates to like interacting with their neighbors, safety the guidelines. So all of that is, you know, is there and in place. So then when COVID-19 occurred, it was kind of like, how do we shift this? And um, I mean, Aritza probably will talk a little bit more soon about this Home Alone series, but, you know, everybody's going virtual now. And we thought, well, you know what? It already, you know, the map exists, all the web-based work that, um, you know, this, this guy Mo and Kurt, who like have really, really helped us over the years to kind of tool the database, the backend database, the website, and then um, what we end up doing, people don't even realize, is that like the day before we actually turn it into basically a static site because the first couple of years it was like our site got was crashing because it was just hitting our database a lot and like all these people coming on. So we still had this issue of just um, of a functionality tool as well. So I mean, the thing about it, again, it's still about the music and it's still about the people. So what we've done is basically take it and ask people to essentially decide if they're either going to do two or three things. One, to do a live, like so almost like a Facebook live type of performance. Um, or if they have a pre-existing recording or, you know, video recording that they want to sort of host. Um, so you as a visitor, you as a viewer will basically still go to our website, 
still be able to look at the map, still, it will still have the zones. And then you'll be able to go through, hopefully the community once again, kind of virtually looking in different neighborhoods and finding different groups the same way as you always would. And then hopefully you'll come across, you know, Dave's, you know, Facebook live performance that you want to, you know, link into. Um, the one thing that we're trying to do too is very much like get them to be very specific. The one thing we've learned about Facebook live or all this virtual stuff is, is the timing of it very much specificity to hopefully have viewers be able to find things easily. Um, so that's kind of what we're hoping and expecting. Um, a lot of people had registered prior to all of this. So what we're trying to do is get back to the people that had registered and then make another boost to people who might still want to register and to kind of say, you know, what are you doing specifically for this event in relationship to the time of the event and then the specific link for the event. So what we hope is we can still somewhat, you know, emulate a few things and highlight the musician, you know, music community of Somerville and, and still have it based on this kind of neighborhood vibe or neighborhood feel, which is kind of the point of it. That's great. And uh, Aritza, um, how how has organization of this been uh, been coming along? What what sort of challenges have you all been facing uh, with uh, you know? I know at the media center we we're uh, we feel pretty technologically caught up, but it, it's it's forcing us to adapt to new technologies. It's certainly like uh, everybody's become way familiar with uh, things like Zoom and, uh, and you know, Google Hangouts much more than anybody was doing before this. So, I mean, what sort of technological and other, other things have you had to adapt to uh, with this new sort of organization of events? I think just generally uh, we've been just like you said, adapting to, new platforms, adapting to new softwares, um, also learning it to a point where we're able to explain it to people who need, need to know how to use it. For example, our performers or um, our audience on how to access it. Uh, we understand um, that not everyone has the access to technology. We understand that not everyone has, um, has had to use all these softwares. So how to make it to a point that everyone can understand it. Um, so, Really for us, it's been a learning curve, but not only on having to uh, rethink the structure of events, but also um, how to provide it for the public. Um, but yeah, it's just um, a lot of, from the small issues as not being able to comment on a video or uh, not being able to share it with certain people, um, just the, that kind of accessibility and also just relearning like, like a program, for example, open broadcaster software, or how to use Facebook Live on a, on a computer versus a phone. So it's just all, it's all new. And um, it's been great to learn and to be able to share that with, with everyone. And what's the, what's the response been from uh, musicians who potentially want to take, uh, take part in uh, Couch Fest, Porch Fest? I mean, so far we've gotten, in the past couple of weeks, we've definitely seen um, people are going, if they haven't, if they already pre-registered, then they've gone back in and they've sort of added their Facebook Live, you know, pages. pages. Um, you can sort of see where they're, they're starting to get their own technological kind of stuff together. Um, you know, they're adding images, which is great. Sometimes in the past, like they wouldn't add an image. And so what happens is, is if by default, it populates with our Porch Fest, you know, default image. And like, I can already see that people are going back in there and adding images. I mean, it's actually pretty, and it's pretty amazing in the sense that if you do go back, like on a database level, like over the years, like how many bands and how much information is there? Um, because, you know, they've got, they've got links to their band's websites or they've got, you know, they've got links to, you know, they've just got links all over the place, right? So, and some of them are posting MP3 files as well, so you can actually listen. Um, so, I mean, you know, has it changed that much? It has and it hasn't. What I worry about is that, that people may still not, make a decision to basically decide to do a Facebook live thing. Um, 
I don't know how they're going to deal with like bands, like because we're saying that you really can't. I mean, you can turn around and perform in your in your home, or you know, you could perform out on the porch ostensibly, but you need to take you know precautions. And right. we're saying that people shouldn't be performing out if you know, and God forbid, if their crowd appears or you know. So we're kind of trying to tamp it down so it literally is about being inside. So then the question is you know, will you and your bandmate come together? Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe they will, and hopefully they feel safe enough to do that. Um, so I think like every day, like our our social health crisis situations seems to be adapting and changing, and maybe people are, you know, are starting to feel a little more optimistic and that they could hopefully perform together. Um, so I think it is interesting, like, like on a on a level in which you know this is providing a platform to allow people to get together hopefully but then hopefully they're doing it in a safe manner or if they're only doing it you know solo so we have no idea but then again it's you know it's still um, what 10 days away or so so i think you know things could change and shift in 10 days as well yeah and uh you know we we were talking before the before we came on live about how um, you know, we, we certainly don't want to to highlight all the upcoming events that have been canceled and how they're, you know, how they're not going to be what they were. I mean, that's that's kind of obvious. Like Porch Fest was was pretty epic last year. <laughs> it was, you know, you had people uh, crowding into streets. You know, everybody was just moving from band to band and, and all the streets were just were lit up. So, it's hey, it's not going to be that. All the, the events coming up are not going to be that, obviously. Um, but you did mention that that the uh, excitement comes through in uh, retooling ways um, and possibly rethinking ways that these worked for you. Um, can you can you expand on that, Greg and Anaritza? Yeah, I mean, I'll bring up. I mean, bring up briefly. I mean, the whole idea of what we try to do with the Arts Council is that you know. One, to bring art and culture back out to the community, and two, to hopefully support the artist. And so <clears throat> a big part of these events have been, you know, our ability to financially support, you know, artists at Carnival or artists at Artbeat. <clears throat> um, and at the same time, you know, tech people, and at the same time, you know, to a certain extent, even DPW workers, right, that, you know, are getting paid to help support us. Um, so, I mean, we came up with, or Ritza basically came up with this whole concept of, you know, home alone where, you know, can we, instead of doing a certain event, can we basically put out a new series that's very specific about trying to support artists um, on an individual needs on a virtual manner? Um, and, you know, Ritza can talk a little bit more about that series, but it's very much still, it was very much couched still about how do we create the justification to, pay people to do a virtual performance, right? And I'll let her talk more about sort of what's been going on with that. Yeah, so Home Alone Art Series. Um, really what it's been, it was like Greg said, a way to be able to support artists in our community. Um, and we like saw that all, like, all the cities around us were also creating these kind of funds and we're like, how can we give back? Um, so I think that during this outbreak, that was like one of the, our biggest uh, priorities was uh, to, to be able to provide that comfort for our artists. So um, obviously we can't bring people physically together. So we were like, how can we make this virtual? Um, and we thought about a way to, to show off the arts that does happen in our city and um, just ask like, like, hey guys, like show us your talents, show us what you do on a regular basis. Um, we've had a lot of artists uh, come to us and say like we've lost all our gigs um, So we want to provide that like a platform for them to be able to you know read us your uh, the book that you wrote or uh, Perform that album that you were gonna have a solo show for um, so it's it's been really beautiful to just be able to talk to artists and um, You know hear their concerns and talk talk about like how they can bring this uh, this thing that they lost, but bring it through us and to show it to our public. Um, and I think the beautiful thing about that too has been that we've been able to provide these like mini, it's, it's, like, it's like a mini series. So every Tuesday and Thursday, we provide like a show for our public. So it doesn't only benefit the artists, but it also comes to a, as a benefit for the community because it's like an hour show that you can just sit down with your family and watch. 
or it's an hour show where you can learn on how to make a mask or how to uh, do a painting or um, you learn about the history of this artist that has been working on this project for so long or on so, or on so many other projects. Um, so it, it's, been, it's been really nice to see that and to be able to provide that to the community, for sure. And um, where can we see these, uh, this, these shows? So we decided to do it through Facebook um, because we were also thinking about the accessibility of the public we were talking about before. Like, what is the easiest platform, a platform that everyone has? That you don't have to download an extra application on your phone. And you don't have to relearn um, how to use the, the like, a, like a feed or like the homepage or the stories. Like we wanted something that was accessible, something that was easy and simple. And we just thought, Facebook. I mean, Facebook is everywhere. Facebook isn't, everybody has a Facebook account. Um, it's one of the most used platforms. It's one of the easiest platforms to use. So, um, and it's easier for the performance as well, because it's really just a button and just making it public for everyone. Um, so we're showing them through Facebook, but um, ideally we will be uh, working on a YouTube. We have our YouTube channel and we will be uploading the videos there for archival purposes. And if it's like a, like we said, like a video that is like a tutorial on how to do a certain thing, you'll be able to access it uh, for further use as well. So that's great. And also, yeah, and also as a way, as a resource for artists to, sh to share um, the performance that they made through the Arts Council and, you know, add it to a resume. Very nice. And um, so these artists, they're reaching out to you directly. Are they emailing you? Um, is that mm -hmm. how they're reaching out? Yeah, so the submission process is through our website um, because our website will tell you like everything that the Home Alone Art Series is about. Um, and also what we require is really just a summary of a performance that you're proposing to us. Um, the performance should be at least 45 minutes long uh, just to add structure like an intro, the presentation or performance and then a Q and A at the end. Um, but uh, really the, the guidelines are very simple. Um, it's just showing off your talent and what your sum of role affiliation is. Very nice. And mm -hmm. uh, what other resources are out there currently for, for artists? Um, uh, I know, like you mentioned, you know, a lot of musicians, they're, they don't have gigs. Um, a lot of artists uh, tend to depend on um, in-person teaching environments to supplement their income, uh, to supplement their art practice. Um, uh, what what sort of uh, money might be available to them right now or in the in the future that that you know of or if not money you know resources? I mean, I can talk briefly about it. I mean, the MCC, the Mass Cultural Council, does have um, they've got an individual sort of artist um, don't, uh, grant category specifically for this Tony of Eid situation. Um, there's also, if you go on our website, um, we did create sort of a, a Kona 19 type of resource listing. And I'm trying to think of all the things that stand out for musicians. I think there is a, you know, there's a Union Musicians Association that's doing something specifically for musicians. Um, there's a lot of different types of, I mean, NIFA is doing things for performance, performing groups, touring groups. Um, I think there's just a host of different things. I mean, we don't necessarily in Somerville and, and maybe this is something like if viewers, you know, are watching this, they want to reach out. Like we're trying to figure out like, you know, can we create, you know, some type of fund for the arts community that's sort of outside of the city? Um, you know, we don't have a community foundation, so to speak, uh, like Boston. Think outside or of the city, you mean, you mean outside of like official? Outside of government, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I know that there's different there's different conversations that we're having around about sort of like, can we, you know, take this sort of crisis and start to figure out ways in which we can build up better infrastructure? Um, I mean, one of the complexities that, you know, I have like working here in the city for almost 20 years is that there's such a wealth of individual, you know, artists, uh, but there's not a ton of strong organizations. And so over the years, like, We've been involved with helping to, you know, start literally helping to start the Nave Gallery, or you know, it used to be called Art Summerall. Um, trying to help and support Washington Street, like we've done. We have this sort of what we call an infrastructure grant category through our LCC program. So, 
that's some of the structure and there's more needs like, you know, uh, some of the work through the Community Preservation Act that the city has has helped support the, the, uh, the Somerville uh, Museum. So, I mean, some of this infrastructure is starting, is forming more and more, but uh, there's still, you know, we don't have a large corporate, you know, sort of corporate sponsorship or corporate giving program here in the city uh, compared to Cambridge or Boston. So there's definitely a lot of things that I feel like, you know, where some of old gains is this sort of individual, independent kind of artist spirit that's always been incredibly strong. And I think all throughout the region, like people look at, you know, what's happening in some of on a creative level. But um, I do think that this crisis has sort of, you know, made us realize that, you know, we need some more infrastructure in place and we need more, you know, sound support mechanisms. And so we're starting to look at that. This Home Alone series is one. Um, I mean, you bring up the fact that, you know, we aren't doing sort of traditional events, but one of the things we're thinking about is do we do a mid-year grant program similar to our, you know, the program that we usually do in October, or money goes out in January, you know, can we revamp another grant program that's specific for individual artist needs, um, you know, starting in July, which is one of the things we're starting to explore as well. So mm -hmm. it's tough. Um, I mean, I do think that folks, if they have specific things or if there are people out there that, you know, they should try to contact me directly if they've got some energy for this. Um, you know, even folks at Somerville Media Center, I mean, we should talk about, you know, ways in which we can create a separate fund that will support, you know, even, there's so many even ad hoc organizations, right? And you know all about them too, whether it's, you know, ad hoc isn't even the right word, but like Brick Bottom Artists Association, the amount of energy that goes on there, it doesn't have a huge infrastructure. Washington Street Art Center, but their, you know, with their, um, you know, pinhole camera exhibits and all the amazing like exhibitions that go on there, the Nave Gallery, you know, Martha Mason's Dance Studio. I mean, she's a strong, you know, she's actually becoming more and more of a strong organization. Uh, Mudflat, I would say, is, you know, another one that's there. But there's so many different groups that, I mean, even Somerville Open Studios that does this amazing job um, is pretty much run on volunteer effort, you know, money that's being brought in by individual artists to support that effort. So it's this fascinating mix of how all this energy makes all this happen. But it's, um, I would say it's still precarious, right? And that's, you know, that's the beauty of it, but that's also the, the kind of danger of it all. Yeah, um, listening to uh, larger area arts organizations, such as like the, the MFA Boston, I, I uh, saw an interview with the, the uh, president of the of the MFA speak, and he mentioned that a lot of smaller arts organizations are going to be um, forced to to maybe merge with uh, with with each with one another in order to survive. Because um, you know, as this thing goes on, um, the, the the sources of funds uh, aren't aren't there. Um, yeah. A lot of these membership organizations, a lot of places that rely on classes and and teaching. Um, so, so it, there's some big questions ahead for arts organizations, yeah. Um, yeah. As, you, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think too that the beauty, I mean, some of the strength of Somerville is this issue of the flexibility. Um, I mean, I, you know, 10 years ago, I think the Boston Foundation, I mean, the same thing, they talked about sort of merging of these, you know, organizations and there was always, there's, you know, there was a, a discussion about how they almost should merge or we should consolidate. And I think of anything what's happened is people realize that like smaller organizations and the energy that comes out of those small organizations are the ones that are like closer, you know, closer to the community and more adaptable and more flexible to be responsive, you know, to that community. And I, if anything, I would say, oh, you know, for Somerville over the course of 10 years, if anything, we've got even stronger kind of individual groups doing some amazing work. So it'll be interesting. And I, I think that's maybe where we can come in play that, you know, is it about sort of a bricks and mortar type of expense or is it more about, you know, supporting groups that are adaptable and that are flexible and that the money's going directly, you know, directly to artists and, um, you know, to support those artists. And I think that's, that to me should be the interesting challenge and also the thing to like help drive the money directly there. I mean, we have a fellowship program. We could, you know, re 
revamp that program and really, you know, take more advantage of supporting artists to do their work, right? Um, so, which we have. And looping back, just looping back to PorchFest uh, as we finish up here. Um, so PorchFest registration is happening now through May 7th. And so, uh, Aritza, when is, when is the actual uh, event going to take place? Uh, the PorchFest or yeah. CouchFest takes place May 9th. May 9th. Okay, very good. So that is something to look out for. Um, and do you have any final thoughts uh, on, on PorchFest, uh, a final appeal uh, to both the musicians and, and uh, you know, non-musicians to, to tune in? Um, what, do you, what do you have to, to, to say? What's your pitch? Sign I up. Think, you know, sign <laughs> up. Yeah, consider participating. It's it's a. We will always make it live as long as we can, like like physical like porch fest. But take advantage of the virtual one because that will live on forever. <laughs> and also, just um, it's it's different. It's something different. So take advantage of the opportunity to to create something different. I mean, we've had all these little, um, like bands making these uh, premiere videos where. They like they're in their own home and they make a video like a song of a song like a video of a song in one video and they combine the audio and it just sounds and it looks so so beautiful so you know just consider exploring and creating something new. Sounds great. Share I it with us. Think of a better way <laughs> to wrap up our our little discussion here. So I, I want to thank you both, Greg Jenkins and Aritza Menjivar from the Somerville Arts Council. Thanks for taking the time and uh, speaking with me. Thank you. Thank you, David.